your forecast first. Sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. All right, good evening to you tonight. Skies beginning to clear, and it has been a chilly day all day. These temperatures have been well below average. And now tonight, we're already starting to see temperatures getting down to that 40-degree mark in Pontiac. It's 41 in Watsika, holding on to some stronger numbers from Champaign down I-72 to Decatur. Uh, but take a look at Springfield, <laughs> dipping to that chilly 39 degrees out the door in the morning. We think a lot of you are going to need to grab the jacket. It's going to be another one of those mornings where you may be flipping on the old heat on the car on the way into work and school. Temperatures coming up, though. Lots of sunshine. The wind's dying down, but the weekend could spell some problems for you. We've got some rain to show you. We'll do that coming up. WCI3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. You're always going to wonder in the back of your mind where she would be in ten, five years or ten years. or But they'll never get that answer. How friends and family are remembering one teenager who drowned this week. Champaign already approved the sale of recreational marijuana. Now a dispensary has a license to do it. <laughs> we have your motivational moment of the night. Why one man ran a marathon all by himself. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Family and friends mourn the loss of a teenager who died in Decatur. A candlelight vigil was held at the lake where she drowned. Good evening, I'm Paul Chikini. And I'm Jessica Coons. Dozens gathered to remember Tabitha Pratt tonight. The 18-year-old was driving when her car plunged into Lake Decatur last night. WCI 3's Jennifer Jensen was at tonight's vigil. So Jennifer, what did people there tell you? Jessica, the night started with prayer for her family. It was hard for them to hold back tears as they told me how much she meant to her family, especially since her death was so unexpected. She was my life, all my life. A father without his daughter. I'm gonna be so lost without her. A sister without her best friend. I do anything for my sister. I wish she was something that could bring her back. <laughs> You just never know what can happen. You, we could be here today and gone tomorrow. The Pratt family's faces fill with tears as they recall how Tabitha Pratt died. On Monday night, police got reports of witnesses who saw her car go off the road. A dive team searched and found her car 20 feet below the surface of Lake Decatur. Tabitha drowned inside. I'm gonna miss her so much. <laughs> On Tuesday night, her family shared how much she meant to them and how much potential they saw in her. When she was 18, she decided it was time to get a big girl job. So she got her first big girl job at Caterpillar. She was becoming an adult, but never got the chance to live out her life. You're always going to wonder in the back of your mind where she would be in ten, five years or 10 years. But for now, they're trying to focus on the future while still remembering her past. Never take life for granted. You can be here today and gone tomorrow. So just, you know, love your family like you're not going to see them tomorrow. I just want you, want everyone to go away from here tonight and just have their hearts filled with her presence. Police are reviewing security footage from buildings near the bridge and continue investigating what happened. Back to you. So much support at that vigil tonight for that family. All right, Jennifer, thank you. Funeral services for a father and son killed in a car crash last week will be this Friday. Tyler Pope died in the crash on Wednesday. His nine-year-old son, Wyatt, died on Saturday. A visitation will be held at Sunset Funeral Home in Georgetown on Friday at 10 a.m. A funeral will follow at 1 o'clock. New Atan, a counseling service in Decatur, is offering free group therapy for women whose children have been killed by gun violence. The founder of Cole Counseling says she's seen an increase in violence in the city. They want to help women struggling with grief and pain. That's why they'll be hosting these free weekly sessions. I know that there are some moms that need to be heard. They need to feel like they're not alone. Um, and they just need to connect because that is a pain and a place that if you've never experienced it, you don't actually know exactly how they're feeling. 
There's no set date yet, but they hope to start the sessions the first week of November. The first group will include five to six women, and it'll last six weeks, even though it'll be free for those who want to join. Coles Counseling Services is looking for sponsors to pay for it. It would be $100 per person. We'll have contact information on our website, WCIA.com. Police need help finding a suspect in a double shooting. 30-year-old Jerry Axum is accused of shooting two men in a parking lot on Bradley Avenue earlier this month. Both men are expected to survive. Police say the shooting began as a physical altercation. Exum is wanted for attempted murder and aggravated battery with a firearm. Anyone with information should call Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous and may earn a cash reward. We have an update on a bank robbery in Champaign. The teenage brothers arrested for robbing Regions Bank were in court today. 18-year-old Dakir Pickens was in adult court. The 16-year-old was in juvenile court court. Both were charged with armed violence, financial institution robbery, and aggravated battery. Attorneys today said the teenagers went into the bank and tried to take money from a worker. They say Pickens fired a gun and then hit the employee in the head several times with the gun. The brothers ran away from the bank and police arrested them several blocks later. It'll soon cost hundreds if you get into a car accident in Springfield, but only if you don't live in the city. The fire department will start charging $750 if they're called out to an accident. The chief says other cities already do this. The money made from this charge will be used to recover costs for the department. The equipment that we use is very expensive. One thing about the fire department is we do not recoup any of that cost. That equipment, um, you know, uh, if this will go a long way uh, once implemented towards helping us uh, recover some of those costs for that very expensive equipment. Whether somebody is charged depends on how long firefighters spend at the scene. Routine medical calls will not be charged. If the fire department is called but they're not needed, they will not charge at all. In new tonight, one medical dispensary in Champaign County got the green light to sell recreational marijuana. The state approved a license for Phoenix Botanical in Champaign yesterday. It already sells medical marijuana. Phoenix is among three dispensaries in central Illinois that has received a recreational license. It will, of course, be able to start selling recreational marijuana January 1st. The Blue Ridge Teachers Union is fewer than 12 days from striking unless a deal is reached. And tonight, dozens packed the school board meeting and several delivered emotional speeches in support of the teachers and staff they spent years with. Emily Braun is with us now. So, Emily, what was the feeling like in that room tonight? Jessica, it was less tension and more hope. The union president told me even though right now union members in the school district still stand far, far, far apart, he was touched by the level of support shown tonight. Don Anton lives in Champaign. For the past 25 years, he's taught at Blue Ridge, where he says his real home is. For many of my fellow members, Blue Ridge has always been home. Two of the people who stood to speak after him were people he once stood in front of as their teacher. I didn't know what they were going to say. Um, teared up a little bit. Danae Deffenbaugh. I stand before you today a loyal and strong supporter of all things Blue Ridge and Night Nation. But I can't lie. That house I bought three years ago, I've tried to sell it. I've looked at other school districts, and I'm trying to accept the fact that my daughter may not graduate at night as I did. And oh, Brittany Sage. The people who work in this district are my heroes. They shaped who I am and who I want to be. And I hope you will honor their work and the risk they take doing it by giving them a fair contest. Plus two others whose words also aimed for the heart. When it means enough for someone to come back, over 10 years later and speak on behalf of their teachers and, and call them out by name about what they meant. Um, you know, it really reinforces the importance of what we do and why it's so critical that we stop the turnover. The dozens of people donning blue rose, walked out of the room and walked laps around the school. With signs, glow sticks and flashlights in hand, they're hopeful a good compromise with district leaders will keep them with the district they've come to love and away from a strike. I think their hearts are in the right place. They value education as much as any of us do. The turnover was one of the biggest concerns of everyone who spoke tonight. They say that's a make or break experience for students when a teacher stays versus when teachers are constantly changing. Jessica. All right, Emily, thank you for that update. Now the board met in closed session tonight to talk about the current state of negotiations. The last scheduled contract talks are on Monday. If there's no deal by then, the board and union can call more meetings to hammer out a contract before the strike date. If no deal is reached by October 28th, that's the day union members say they can and will go on strike.
You want a story about determination? Here you go. Now, one man kept up a yearly tradition while deployed halfway around the world. Plus, high pension costs threaten the livelihood of one city. What bold move a mayor made to stave off debt. And they say good things come to those who wait. But one team has been working at this moment for years. What they hope to make happen on Friday.